Welcome to the San Siro Stadium, the day of decision. Second place Inter, three points behind the leaders, Sampdoria. Four Inter victory is essential. So will Sampdoria's nerve hold on the verge of their first Italian league title? Sampdoria's major concern in team selection, the state of Roberto Mancini, who cut a foot in Italy's 3-1 midweek win over Hungary in the European Championship, a game in which Gianluca Vialli and Mancini, so effective together at club level, were finally back in tandem in the international side. Toninho Cerezo there, the only imported talent in the starting lineup, with Mikhailichenko and Katanec out of the picture at the moment. So can this inter-side answer the call of their supporters who are massed here in a crowd of over 80,000? So much resting on those three Germans, Bremer, Klinsmann and Matthäus, all of whom played for their country in midweek. A 1-0 win over Belgium with Matthäus getting the goal. Battistini is suspended, so Paolo Stringara comes in in midfield. The two teams led out by referee Pietro Delia to a deafening noise. The two captains, Luca Pellegrini of Sampdoria and Giuseppe Bergami of Inter. The formalities are over. There's been a ring round this date in the diary for some time. The top two in the Italian first division head-to-head. -head. For Inter, it has to be a victory if they're going to retain uh, their hopes of coming out on top. Sampdoria, strong and settled. But they haven't won here since September... 1983 when the two goals in a 2-1 win were scored by the man sitting alongside me today Trevor Francis, we'll hear from Trevor after the free kick taken by Mateus and Viali steers it back Trevor, good afternoon Good afternoon, Martin It's certainly a big day and I think that uh, we're going to see Inter pressing from the start. It's a game that they have to win. Whereas Sampdoria, I'm sure, will be coming here looking for the point, looking to the speed of Lombardo, Mancini and Viali, and trying to play on the break, with Inter pushing forward at every opportunity. Well, we know Sampdoria have the skill. They have the talent, the technique. But do they have the nerve? Although they've been successful in cup competitions through the 80s, They've just failed in the finishing straight in the championship races. But they're in pole position at the moment. And few would dispute their right to uh, win the title if it pans out that way. Each side has three games left after today. But the mathematics are quite simple. If Sampdoria wins here, they're five points clear with three games to go. It's almost in the bag. Matthias lines up the shot, and uh, Vierkovod took the pace out of it. Just to complete that story, the season before that, into were champions, they were unbeaten here, so you have to go back to February 88 to find a visiting team from another city to get two points at Inter's expense at San Siro. That was Torino. It was interesting to see Matthias there trying a shot from, what, fully 35 yards? But as I say, with the pitch being so slippery, it does present a uh, problem to the goalkeeper. 
very, very difficult to take the ball cleanly when it's slippery. I think that's the reason why Mateus is looking to shoot from that sort of distance. We've had the opening quarter of an hour of this mega match in the Italian First Division. And Mateus tries again. And <laughs> Pagliuca was very confident that he got his bearing sorted out and that that would fly on wide. Well, as we've seen so many times on this programme, that from that sort of distance, Mateus is deadly. He's hit that with great power, but unfortunately, just wasn't on target. But I think, uh, fair to say, that Paluca had it uh, well covered. Well, he certainly believed he had it well covered. Klinsman. Another long ball from Ferry. And... Sampdoria thought it was going to run out behind. A Stringara wasn't of that mind. He did well to reach it. Sereso. <laughs> Now, Fierkevod, who does have a championship winner's medal with Roma in 83. Straight after that season, he joined Sampdoria. Problem here for Invenizzi. Mancini takes the free kick and certainly Sampdoria not uh, filling the inter-penalty area. The whistle went as the uh, ball arrived. A slight surprise for Sampdoria supporters to see Invenizzi in the team because they're hoping that uh, Katanic would recover from injury and he would have taken his place in the midfield but um, without him and of course without Mikhail Chanko who's on the bench, just leave it there. Look at the nerve showing, even from such a hardy character as Fjerkevod. Not quite on the same uh, wavelength as the uh, much younger goalkeeper, Paliuka. A lot of uh, head shaking at the end of that, but no soul searching because it didn't cost them a goal. No, I was saying without Katanic and uh, without Mikhail Chanko, who's still uh, unable to get a place in this team. Shereza was the only foreigner actually playing on the field today for Sampdoria. Here's Paganin. Again, uh, Serena got there, and the second time is a great header, Klinsmann! Well, as Jürgen Klinsmann launched himself then, it did look as though Inter were going to grab the first goal. It was an attack in which Aldo Serena twice played a part. This uh, was the second header. And how close did Klinsmann come? Very, very close indeed. Well, I feel that must go down as a good chance. It was an intelligent header from Serena back across the goal. I feel he spotted Klinsmann at the far post. Pellegrini obviously distracted uh, Klinsmann, but I felt that he took his eye off the ball. If he had not been so concerned with Pellegrini's boot, although it's easy to say that when you're not there on the field, I'm sure he would have connected with the header. Mancini, turning away from Stringara. Trying to open up a defence which has just leaked a little more than Sampdoria's this season. But there... Uh, Records quite similar, Inter 52 goals scored, 26 against, Sampdoria 48 scored, 20 against. Bertie. One of the best at arriving late on the scene from 
midfield in the Italian game. He's well forward at the moment. And he's brought down by a protesting Cereso, who gets the yellow card. Oh, Viali having his say. Trevor smiling uh, wryly about uh, Bertie's capacity to fall, perhaps. Well, no wonder Shadezo's annoyed, because quite clearly there, Bertie has taken a dive, and uh, poor Shadezo's gone into the, into the referee's uh, book, receiving a yellow card. Very unfortunate for him. Well, he might be more concerned about the position where the so-called offence took place. And Bertie still involved in trying to argue his own case. Sampdoria collectively turned on the number eight to accuse him, really, of influencing the referee unfairly. But the booking has happened. Now, what will occur at the free kick? That's the bigger worry to Sampdoria. Trapattoni trying to get a point across in time. Stringara has his back to the goal. Oh, brilliantly saved by Pagliuca. Bremer was the decoy. Mateus was the man. It's a corner. Paganin doesn't make the most of that. Cerezo, who in the end was happy that his goalkeeper saw it coming and was able to shovel it aside for the corner. But into press on again, and the header in from Serena is just too far ahead of Bertie once more. Well, Bertie made a good run there through the centre, and uh, sure his disappointment because the header from Serena didn't reach him, but it had to have been one hell of a header to have reached him because. Uh, He's certainly asking for a lot for Serena to hit the ball 30 yards. This was the free kick. Hit with all the might of the right foot of Loda Mateus and Paliuka flung himself across. And we've seen goalkeepers outpowered so often by Mateus. That has to go down as a very important save. But here's Bremer. Oh, oh it's got to Bertie! And again, Pagliuca going to the left as he had to from the Matthias free kick. Kept it out. But Sampdoria were vulnerable there. Really, it was uh, a mishit cross from Bremer in the first place. Well, it certainly wasn't a very good cross from Bremer, but it was a mistake, I believe, by Imanizzi that gave Bertie the chance. And once again, Pagliuca was alive to the situation with a good save. Sampdoria drawing all, all their uh, teamwork and their shape of play that's been uh, so well defined, but it isn't defined now because Klinsmann has broken clear. And uh, there's Bedlam here because the linesman had his flag up the spectators and I must say the commentator had eyes for Jürgen Klinsmann and what he was going to do with the chance he did well enough with it but it was all irrelevant and look at this that's why we were watching Klinsmann Trevor well you can see quite clearly that was a terrible decision by the linesman I would think the most rela relieved man on the field at this moment would be Viali because he lost possession, but quite clearly, Pellegrini was playing Klinsmann onside. Clearly, two yards he was onside. A bad decision by the linesman. Inter entitled to be aggrieved, particularly their coach.
as the uh, ball came through, you really didn't think about offside. Bergami, not much angle on it. Not forward by Pari for Sampdoria. And uh, that was high by Bergami, who's going to get booked. Happily for Sampdoria, Viali's on his feet. That's no thanks to Bergami. A booking for him. Gianluca Viali back for Italy last Wednesday for the first time since the World Cup. He scored in the 3-1 win. He also missed a penalty. And he nearly was missing a knee after the height of Bergami's challenge. And Mancini can't reach it. There haven't been uh, too many hardships for Zenga. Mateus. Brought out by Dosena this time. And to have to be careful, Sampdoria haven't been over bashful in the number of players that they've got forward when they have counter-attacked, but those moments have been pretty rare. But Lombardo has played superbly on the far side. And now it's anger because Inter feel that Mancini was trying to win a penalty there by diving. Hot-blooded, hot-tempered. Hard to handle for a referee. And Pietro Delia, has he seen something serious here? It's a red card for Bergami and for Mancini. It was too hot for the referee. It's ten aside. Well, we wondered whether Mancini would start the game. We now know that he's not going to finish it. And Inter lose their captain in stoppage time at the end of the first half. And they go off side by side. Trevor Francis. It's an unbelievable scenario here because there was anger as Mancini went down. Paganin was the defender who made the merest of contact with Mancini who fell flat on his face knowing that the cross wasn't going to reach him. Bergami still hasn't reached the dressing rooms. Bedlam. But the referee's got any sense, he'll blow for half-time because he's completely lost. Well, he's been hit by an object there, obviously. That's why he's gone down. And the referee has done just what you suggested. It is half-time. A match that perhaps took an expected course with Inter driving forward, trying to win it by their own direct means. But it's been a most distasteful ending to the half. First of all, with the settings off, which had happened before this slow motion that you're looking at here, of Bergami being hit in his own stadium, remember? Perhaps they were aiming for Mancini. But it's nil-nil on the scoreline. It's 1-1 in terms of players being sent off. And uh, there's a cooling-off period going on now at half-time. Inter nil, Sampdoria nil. Welcome back to the San Siro Stadium. Really one major topic of conversation at half-time, the double sending off. And Mancini turning to 
Bergami. A head-to-head, -head, but not too much contact, I don't think. Eyeball to eyeball, and I think a lot of people here very surprised that referee Delia reached for the red card. So we've got a tennis-side game for the second half. Inter nil, Sampdoria nil, and here's Jurgen Klinsmann. Mateus thought once about shooting and then thought better of it. Well, it's even more of a hardship up front for Viali now. But he won't mind too much as long as the defenders do their jobs for Sampdoria. The feeling here at half-time, the other talking point, of course, the disallowed goal for Klinsman, where the linesman flagged, and Klinsman clearly was onside, but it's possible that Klinsman might have been penalised for pushing as he set off on that run. Certainly two major, major talking points through a very tense first half. And Inter have a free kick. And Paliuka, we shouldn't forget the two saves that he made in the first 45 minutes either. And he was right behind it there from Andy Bremer. Who's back now, uh, clearing from Lombardo. Trevor Francis, do you think the two sendings off? Well, first of all, your opinion on the referee's decision? Well, I think that um, Signor Dili had a very poor first 45 minutes and it culminated with the uh, double sending off of Bergami and Mancini, which I don't think warranted a sending off at all. In fact, Bergami, he'd already been booked for a disgraceful tackle on Viali, so he won't be particularly missed in this game. Bremer. Klinsman keeps on chasing and uh, gets the ball, courtesy of Paganin's tackle. Bianchi, that came off in Venizzi. Lombardo's header out. Cerezo, I'm sure Sampdoria will expect to enter, if they can, to redouble their efforts in the opening phase of the second half. It's always a vulnerable time for away teams. Bremer, Bertie, Bianchi. Oh, it was Serena's shot that was blocked. Dennis Header, Klinsman trying to get the ball down and uh, he made it back. But Bianchi got free. And should this. Well, we're not going to see it again. That no, was an excellent move by Inter. Good ball from Bertie into the uh, space there for, for uh, Bianchi, who pulled the, pulled the ball back for uh, Serena. But although it was blocked by Viequid, I feel that Serena's shot was flying over the top of the crossbar. Clinton was hoping to, to uh, get the ball down and maybe turn with it. And the referee didn't allow him to stand his ground. Well, it's uh, straightforward enough to watch what's going on on the ball, but you do feel, after the way the first half finished and some other stormy moments, that maybe, Trevor, we're going to have to share the responsibility here and keep an eye on the off-the-ball matters as well. This is Bianchi, who uh, usually stays wide on the right and caught Sampdoria out by... Uh, Propping up in that uh, old-fashioned inside left channel. Uh, 
Nanini's header away. Paddy. Undoubtedly, Inter had a greater share of the ball in the first half. But it didn't bring them a goal. Well, not one that counted. Stringara. Well, he took the responsibility. That's the uh, best that one can really say. And Inter are going to need plenty of players to do that as their supporters are going to become more and more agitated if they fail to break through. Bremer. One well by Bertie. Can he go on here? Manini made sure that he couldn't. And there's no doubt that Bertie was fouled that time and there was no attempt to cheat the referee. It's a booking for Manini. Look at that. Yes, quite clearly a fell there on uh, Bertie. Encouraging for Inter to see Bertie making these surging runs uh, from midfield. And they've certainly taken off from where they uh, left off in the first half. Inter undoubtedly the best team in the first half. In the opening few minutes in the second half, there's certainly a determined mood to score a goal. And Sampdoria's policy of containment. even more likely to continue with the departure of Mancini. Bremer to Mateus. And the goalkeeper was lucky. It came straight out to Vierkevod. The danger not over yet. Offside. Again, even though you know what's coming, dealing with it is altogether a different matter. And it thudded back into play off Paliuka. It could have gone to a, a Serena or a Klinsman, and Inter would have been in front. Instead, it flew fiercely at Vierkevot. Lombardo. Can Sampdoria stand the truck, the strain as uh, Inter pile forward again? Pagani. Mateus. Held up by Cereza. Here's Ferry, who's taken over the uh, captain's armband from Bergami. The dummy to let Klinsman turn, it was Bertie's dummy. And it very nearly was the uh, key to this strong Sampdoria door. Which stays shut. But you wonder for how long. All the work that Inter have put into their season will account for little if they can't come up with two points here. not the same as we've been stressing for Sampdoria they'll stay top if they lose with a one point advantage three games to go Bertie this is Stringara down he goes and Stringara is appalled by the referee's failure to give a penalty then it was clearly inside the area the referee was very close to it and my first impression was that he should have pointed to the spot well his foot that was caught was inside the area maybe the ball wasn't but Stringara and that side of him was Bremer that's behind. Who'd be a referee? He's had to make some very, very important decisions. And unfortunately, he hasn't got too many right. I felt on that occasion that Stringara came inside the defender. 
It will certainly let the penalty to me. Referees that will be a professional in Italy next season, but that won't make it any easier. These decisions, split-second judgments. Stingara had turned the ball to a more central position and was trying to follow it, but wasn't allowed to get there. Stingara again. Bertie gets it back. This time, Bianchi. Oh, the goal was there for the taking. The goal that Inter at this stage richly deserved. It was beautifully set up between Serena and Bertie. Out uh, came Pagliuca and did well. You couldn't say the same about Bianchi, although he had to take it very quickly. Well, that was good. That is a double miss for Inter there. First Bertie and then Bianchi. But give credit to Pellegrini, because when Serena played the one-two with Bertie, it was a tremendous tackle by Pellegrini to thwart Bertie. Nowhere in the world will you see club football played at this intensity. Bertie. A crowd of 80,000 plus, most of them desperate for Inter to get a goal here. And Boscov, who will be 60 years old next Thursday. How has he stood the strain all these years? And so many high-profile jobs. Mateus, Bremer just a little slow for once to anticipate his friend and fellow countryman. Well, I'm sure that Boskov there is thinking about doing something to try and ease the pressure. He was talking there to young uh, Benetti, a left-sided player. They're defending so deep, Sampdoria, that players like Stringata, who oh, is wrong-footed here, they have been having the run of midfield, but Viali, with Cerezo making a good run, and Dosena is there as well! Would you believe it? 15 minutes into the second half, the first shot in anger. Pepe Dosena, his first goal in the league this season, and what a time to get it. What a way to get it. Sampdoria can see the championship here. They've been pinned in their own penalty area. And then within seconds, they're a goal in front. And what a goal. Viali made all the running. And Pepe Dosena did all the scoring. They're winning a lot of headers, Inter, but they're losing the match. And if they do that, in everything but the mathematical sense, they will lose the championship. Viali has got it through to this pacey player, Lombardo. It's, it's no exaggeration to say that he had the title there. Surely Inter wouldn't have come back to win the match from being two goals adrift and once Lombardo had got free of uh, Bremer's attentions he looked up looked to where he wanted to plant the ball but he couldn't do it Glensman oh and Sampdoria got too many players in there Berti Delia what's he going to make of this Berti believes he's got a penalty. And I think he has. Sampdoria before that had so many opportunities really to clear their lines and they got in each other's way. 
And then Bertie picked it up just inside the penalty area. Sereso stepped across him. Lota Mateus has planted the ball on the spot. Drama upon drama. Here comes Mateus. Oh, and he saved it! And Mateus, as the ball rolls fractionally free, got to it, but could only get it wide. Well, surely he won't bet against Sampdoria now. The man who didn't take a penalty in the World Cup final stepped up with Inter's season on the line here and drilled it straight at the most capable goalkeeper the european footballer of the year the captain of the world cup winners has shown a human frailty in a high pressure situation and on we go with Viali, but not for long. Very sort of that. The notebook is out, the card's out. Fasto Parry in the bottom of your picture there. Really scarcely able to believe what's happening. It's a feeling shared by Trevor Francis and myself. Well, Parry was looking for the referee to send him off for the professional foul as he was the last man. I think that would have been a bit harsh, as I felt the penalty was. There were one or two penalties prior to that, but I think Bertie was certainly looking for that penalty, and Chavezo was very unfortunate to be uh, given a penalty against him. So here comes Pizzi in place of Stringata. We're in the 24th minute of the second half. A second half in which Sampdoria have taken the lead and Inter have wasted several opportunities to score before that, then a golden opportunity to equalise when Mateus failed from the penalty spot. No one is being shortchanged by this match. Klinsmann. Pizzi, who is naturally left-footed, he really is an attacking midfield player. Bremer takes the free kick. Oh, and Matthias is the loser again. As Bremer whipped it in. Oh, and Klinsmann was still competing for that. Manini knew that it was going to stay in play. While Paliuka, I think, felt that it could have gone out. There's Bonetti still uh, waiting for the call, and you can't take a corner from there. But Bremer's being allowed to do that. It wouldn't have dropped in, I think. And Paliuka again. It's almost a coaching class of goalkeeping skills. Had to move his feet quickly to back pedal. And that was a difficult bounce up on the chin, says the referee. Viali's chin. Referee absolutely perfectly placed. Bianchi, Berthi's in there. And Sampdoria, we've seen them strike with Venom on the break. In other matches away from Genoa than this one. And they needed to play it right then. And now 
men like Pari and Invernetzi are out of position and need to be covered. And Manini was there. Dostena Lombardo is round the goalkeeper it's hit the post Viali still waiting in the middle here he is and it's off the line in years to come people will be saying I was here I was at that game so much that will live long in the memory this will haunt Lombardo and Viali if Sampdoria don't win the championship. 15 minutes to go. It stays at 1-0. How? Well, the uh, incident there really needs no additional comment from me. Grown men, hardened football watchers, are scarcely able to turn their eyes to this. And surely it's two this time. It is! The somersault of celebration from Gianluca Viali. Zenga says it must have been offside. The linesman says no. and running off the Sampdoria bench. How did he stay calm enough in this cacophony here in the stadium? But Viali did. His 18th goal of the season. Well, not even a full season for him. Champagne that Trevor was talking about earlier. Well, they might be getting it ready now in the dressing room. Poor Inter, you have to say, <laughs> they've done enough, as Trapattoni will, I'm sure, tell you, they've done enough to win this game two or three times over. forces here have a major problem in this section of the ground there are seven minutes to go and of course there have been occasions where crowd behavior has influenced the verdict on fixtures and they will say the Milan section of support in the city the AC Milan section that Napoli Got an unfair advantage in that respect last season. And Paliuka, who's had shots raining in from on the pitch, is now getting pelted from behind the goal. And Mateus trying to bring some sanity to this. And Zenga as well. This is no way to lose. That's the message that Mateus is trying to impart. And they're trying to rip up the seats to hurl them onto the pitch. And if law and order isn't restored there quickly, I wonder whether the players might have to go off before this match is finished. And you certainly feel that Sampdoria deserve to have their triumph here. All right, they've had their luck in this match. Inter of missed the opportunities to win the game and get back meaningfully into the championship race. But there's mob rule up there. And just look at the debris on the playing surface. The players have got to get as far away from that. And Zenga showing a genuine concern for his opposite number. 
you have to say, where are the authorities? Trevor, sum it up for us if you can. Well, what can one say after a performance like this? Inter have played absolutely fantastic. Yet here they are, find themselves on the end of a 2-0 defeat. Full credit to Sampdoria. It suited them really to play on the counter-attack. They've come here for a point. They've come away with two. And here's the man who's coming off now, Viali. He's done so much in earning, them, earning them this victory today. Marco Lana is on the pitch. But can surely only play a part for a few seconds. Free Delia, who sent off Bergami and Mancini, who gave Inter a penalty when they were 1 0 down, which Matthias, of all people, missed it. Well, it was saved by Paliuka, who had a fantastic game. Viali, the scorer of the second goal, the creator of the first for Dosena. We'll have to wait a week or so for it to be confirmed mathematically, but take it from me. Sampdoria are the champions of Italy for the first time and they've sealed a success in the most difficult of circumstances. Boscov adds another trophy to his catalogue of successes. Zenga this time is a loser and Inter, although the players did them proud, have been let down by their supporters. A day that certainly lived up to all the pre-publicity and it's finished. Inter nil, Sampdoria 2.